in the next part of my gear is the astronomical side of things. This is the third telescope I've ever owned. The first telescope I ever had was a two inch refractor. It was got to me one Christmas. It came out of a chemist. It was one of those plasticky ones and the, you know, the real bad mounts and plastic glass. It wasn't very good, but that was my first instrument. I was very happy with it. It introduced me to the stars. It gave me the thrill of having a telescope, my first telescope. I actually seen Comet Hale Bop's tail and coma through that, that uh, telescope, which is very memorable. But I remember the finder scope was so small, the field of view, the eyepieces were so small and cheap. It took me nearly half an hour to find the comet to get it in the centre of the field of view of the telescope, even though it was a bright naked eye comet. That's how narrow the field is and how difficult it is to find even a large bright object. My second telescope was a four and a half inch Tasco reflector, a short tube reflector. I've actually found this image on Google, which I'll post right now. This telescope I absolutely loved. I loved it. I actually got it in Korean in a Photoshop a photography shop years ago. My mum partially chipped in for the telescope and I had money I chipped in for her too. I think back in the day it was about £185 or something like that. It was reduced from like £200 to £185 and that was my Christmas present. It was a beautiful telescope. The aperture was only four and a half inches, of course, but it was my first Newtonian reflector. I loved reflectors. Uh, it looked cool. It looked complicated. It was on an equatorial mount. It had the slow motion controllers on the side of it. And with that, I used it to see my first objects, my first relatively decent views of planet Jupiter and Saturn. And I even seen my first deep sky objects with that telescope. I have a particularly fond memory of seeing M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, through that instrument, seeing that large fuzzy glow and knowing it was an island universe with 400 billion suns, possible life on it. I actually seeing it through my telescope was mind blowing. I loved it and I think that's when I got the bug for deep sky objects. I also seen M81 and M82 in it, the two, my two favourite spiral galaxies in Earth's major. Loved it. So that telescope I had for a number of years and I no longer have it in my possession which I'm very sad about because it has so much sentimental value. I loved that telescope so much even though the aperture was relatively small. If memory serves me correctly, I sold it to someone, the person who came to my house, had a look at it, reckoned they could do some DIY on it to improve it and they bought it off me for their son. So I don't know the history of it now, or what has happened since, but I loved that telescope so much. On from that, my third telescope at the moment, I've had five telescopes in my lifetime, I've, and I've used about seven, but I've owned about five. Uh, this was my third. Uh, I remember working at the time on the building sites, I was labouring at the time for a precast company, and I saved up enough money, worked really, really hard to get this telescope. At the time, this is the Mead ETX 90mm RA, the first ETX telescope that was ever produced. This is a short tube long focal length design on like sort of Cassegrain and at the time it cost about 500 or £599. I still have it to this day, I'm glad to say. It's not my favourite kind of telescope but it has a lot of memories. It came with the 26mm eyepiece and I've got a couple more high power eyepieces for it. I no longer have the finder scope on it but I'm used to finding things without finders now. And it's got this simple alt azimuth mount, the setting circles here, and as you can see, it's a three and a half inch cracker plate in the front of it. Maxud of Cassegrain is a very specialised instrument. They're even they're the same sort of ideas as Schmidt Cassegrain, where you have the long focal length system folded up inside the tube. But this one's different in that it has higher resolution detail with a spot in the middle of the, the, the cracker plate instead of a mirror. It's, these are long focal length telescopes in a small, a small package. They're designed for high resolution sharp views of the moon, of planetary detail and of splitting close double stars during moments of good seeing conditions. With this telescope I've seen tremendous detail on planet Jupiter, I've seen the equatorial belts, I've seen festoons, I've seen irregularities within the, the belts, I've seen the north and south temperate belts and zones. I've seen the Galilean satellites do their daily 
dance around the, the planet and I've seen their shadows cast onto the planet of this. I've seen Saturn, I've seen the A and B ring, I've seen Cassini's division, I've seen Titan and several of the other fainter moons going around and great memories. I've seen Mars, I've seen the polar caps on Mars and deep sky objects, double stars etc etc. I spent a lot of hours using this telescope. This telescope has also seen a number of comets too. It has seen better days, the tube is a bit and the mount's a bit wonky and it's noisy but the optics are superb on it and it still works fine. This was my second, sorry, my third ever telescope and one of the two I currently use. The other telescope I use you already know of is my 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. That's my workhorse telescope which I'm using every night at the moment to observe comets. And at some stage in the future I'm going to upgrade to another telescope. I believe I may go along the route of a 8 inch, 10 inch range reflector, probably on a Dobsonian mount. Something that's large, a light, large light bucket that's easy to use and I can take it apart and take it in and out of the van and carry it to different locations. That would be a good idea and preferably with a 2 inch focuser system so I can have a, have a really cool light piece at home. I haven't brought it with me, it's part of my collection. I have a, a super wide angle 32mm 2 inch Mead series 4000 light piece which I bought years ago but I think back then it was 250-300 pounds just for the eyepiece of the one. That generates a very wide angle field of view of high quality. So if I do get a, another telescope I will have a 2 inch focuser to fit that eyepiece and I'd say the views would be incredible. But anyway, this is one of my telescopes, the other one's the 8 inch. I'll set this aside. Also comes with slow motion controls. You can unlock your azimuth motion here with this controller here so it doesn't move on you. You can unlock it and you have a slow motion control. Turn the telescope here. You also have a altitude lock here or declination lock. Tighten that. Slow motion control here and you can control the vertical up and down motion of the telescope slowly to track a planet. There's also a facility here, if you can get an accessory attached in the back of it, you can change it so you can look through the eyepiece, or sorry, look directly through the optical system here, or attach an adapter, a T-adapter for a camera, and hence you can flip the mirror system inside, either up or down, which is quite useful. This telescope does excel with high power eyepieces. Anything around the 15mm range up to 97 or even 6.4mm, um, and nights of good scene will show incredibly sharp details of the planets. Really nice instrument. I mainly use this now actually for sunspot observations. That's the role of this ETX in my life and it has been for a long time. Because it's a small aperture it collects less heat from the sun. But you can buy a Mylar solar filter sheet online. You cut it to size and put it over your telescope or you can use the projection system by projecting the sunlight through the, in, through the eyepiece out onto a sheet of cardboard or paper and you can get a large view of the sun with the sunspots on it that way so it's good for showing to groups of people. So this is my solar instrument.